Hey guys, welcome back. Continuing on with our randomization system within the for each node, we're going to add some more randomization to these. As you can see, at the moment, everything is looking very, very kind of um, homogenous and sort of the same. And also what I've noticed as well, we've got a kind of issue with these bottom leaves. They, they don't seem to be randomizing uh, that much. So I want to make one change and that is in our leaves randomizer here, where we're multiplying by our random seed. I'm going to change that to a, an add. And because if you remember, if you multiply anything by zero, you're going to get zero. So we might have a, a, a rogue zero in there that's kind of giving us the same seed value for that individual leaf at the bottom. And you can see that's fixed that very quickly. Um, the next thing we want to do is just add a little bit of a little bit of jitter to these points so they're not perfectly uh, even and we can do that with a point jitter node so I'm just going to put down a point jitter and put that after the resample node and you can see that gives us a lot of noise uh, random noise based on a simple algorithm here so we can just drop the scale down a bit and then we've got individual control of the axes there so perhaps we might want to put the y-axis at zero just so we start to get some a little bit of noise and a little bit of randomness and again this is a parameter that we can promote onto the digital asset to give us a little bit more control the next thing i'd like to fix is the orientation of these um, at the moment everything is kind of very planar and aligned in one direction which is you know it's kind of throwing the whole thing off so we need to add some rotation or orientation values to those points going into our for each loop um, there are a couple of ways to do it. Um, they, again, hacky. <laughs> the hacky way that I like to do is with a wrangle node. And what we're going to do is we're just going to specify a rotation value and pick a random number between that. So if we say 180 degrees, we can then generate a random number based on a range between minus 180 and positive 180. So let's just set that up now. So we'll create a flow attribute called uh, rot val for rotation value and we'll set that to be equal to a parameter that we create so we'll call this rot val and then press that little magic button there that will create that parameter and we'll set this to be 180 and this again will be a parameter that we can choose to to manipulate the next thing we want to uh, to address is the rotation attribute. Now, this is one of the attributes that's kind of built into Houdini, and it's at rot. So that's the rotation attribute, and we can assign this um, rotations in in CG packages and, and Houdini tend to use a thing called quaternions. Uh, quaternions are kind of magic <laughs> magic numbers that all calculate rotations um, they're not very user friendly to work with um, humans prefer to use Euler angles so the traditional 0 to 360 that we kind of all recognize so before we can plug that into this which is expecting a quaternion we need to do a bit of maths on it to sort of convert it um, into a value that Houdini can interpret as, a, as an orientation value. And the way we can do that is with the built-in expression Euler to quaternion, okay? So this is going to take some Euler values, so numbers that we understand, and it's going to turn them into a quaternion, okay? So we can open up this expression. And we get a little um, help card here, which is often really, really useful when dealing with VEX, just to sort of scan read this to see what's going on and what arguments are expected. So this is telling us it creates a vector four, so a quaternion from Euler angles. Um, it's also telling us that it needs to be, the angles are in radians, okay? So again, not something that humans like to deal with <laughs> unless you're an expert at maths. Um, radians are again just another way of representing uh, angles so we need to convert those Euler angles into radians using the radian function and here we go now we can plug in our flow number in degrees okay so this is expecting um, a vector so x y and z so if we want to rotate on x y or z we could do that and we can just build a new vector 3 so on x we're going to say 0 and we'll plug in our rot val 
into the y component of it okay so that will build that vector 3 for us and then we can close off that radians expression and then the Euler to quaternion is expecting an order in which to rotate these and the default one usually works fine so we can put that to close and there's our expression that will create that rotation value okay nothing is happening okay so what we need to do is generate a random value for this rot val. So we want to take another floating value and we'll call this rand rot val. And this will be fit based on the point number this time. So what point number we've got coming in. And we'll multiply that by just a random amount. And then for the fit range, we want to go minus rot val, so the negative version of it, and the positive version. Okay. And now in our expression, we can just plug that per point rand rot val in there. Okay. And it wasn't working because I haven't got it plugged in. <laughs> so once we built that attribute wrangle, remember to plug it in. Certainly helps with the with the data flow. So our rot value is now going to drive the orientation of these points once we plug that in. And there we go. You can see we're we're picking up a random rotation um, on each copy. Don't worry too much about the the colour of these back faces. That's just Houdini indicating to us that. Um, these are back faces. When we come to work in Unreal Engine, we can activate a double-sided material so we won't see this back face. We'll just see the, um, the texture map as it should be. Okay, so don't worry about that too much. We could, if we wanted to, we could apply a material in Houdini and specify um, you know, force double-sided or use a specific double-sided shader. Um, but we can live with it in the viewport because as you'll see when we move over into Unreal, um, it all kind of it all kind of works out with a double-sided shader. Cool. So this is our sort of simple randomization setup. So we can promote these parameters to the digital asset to really create some interesting variety uh, of different shapes and sizes. Another way that I want to uh, to show you, another way to cluster this is using scatter. So if we put down a circle and then just align it so it's sat on the floor, okay? And I'm just going to reduce the scale right down. Okay, so now we've got this circle. We can scatter some points along that with a scatter node. Okay, I'm just going to change that back to primitive. There we go. And obviously, we don't want to copy a, a thousand, a thousand uh, ivy leaves onto that. So we'll drop that to something a bit more reasonable, like forty. Okay, and you can see that the the system is exactly the same. So we can take our circle and our scatter, and we can maybe drop that into a switch node as well. So we can choose which one to that we want to use. Um, so it will flow. The data will flow through as as we've previously built because we're just dealing with point attributes at this time. So if we select the switch node and put the um, the input to one, so we're selecting now the circle. You'll see we'll have a very different look to our. And maybe maybe that's a few too many. So we'll just drop that down to twenty. So you can start to see how we can build clusters of. Ivy, and we can even go back and sort of manipulate the shape of this circle to generate the, the precise shape that we're going for when creating these uh, ivy clumps. Okay, cool. So, with that, what I'd recommend you guys do is play around with this little um, randomization system and sort of continue adding those point expressions to all your different attributes here to really get some interesting looks and um, in the next video what we'll do is we'll start to discuss how we're going to move this from Houdini into Unreal Engine so we'll look at how we can package this up 
as a digital asset so we can reuse it in any future projects that we might have or we could pass it on to other Houdini users um, and in addition to that we'll also take a look at some export pipelines so we'll touch on Houdini engine as well in Unreal so I hope that was useful um, and I'll see you in the next video thanks